Hi everyone! Sorry I'm a minute late, I just had a bit of a technical issue with my phone. Um, tonight we've got Will Bailey MBE, which is just amazing. He's a Paralympic gold and silver medalist and it's just fantastic that he wants to join us tonight. I'm just going to add you now, Will. Hello. Hi, Will. How are you? How are you doing? Yeah, nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Thanks for having me. No, thanks for joining us. It's amazing. Um, is, my, is my head round the right way, or am I a bit? Am I the am I the wrong way? Yeah, the, yeah, you're the wrong way. I'll try and I'll try and correct that one sec. Uh, thank you. How's everything going? Yeah, good. Thank you. How are you doing? How are you coping with lockdown and everything like that? Pretty good. I mean, it's been um, been, um, been up and down, you know, like everyone. I think just uh, just um, being a bit strange times, isn't it? But I've tried to stay positive, obviously, because of my injury. It's given me a bit of time to sort of rehab it, rehab my knee, and, and get back and get back focused on. I've watched a lot of table tennis. I've watched so much, so that's probably helped me as well. So yeah, I can't wait. It's probably everyone can't wait to get back playing, really. Yeah, I bet you can't. We just had a few lovely messages, you know, like. Will, sir, you're my inspiration. Keep doing fantastic role model. Oh, thanks. You know, lovely messages of support. But um, yeah. Yeah. as you're fully aware, we have a mixture of talent amongst army table tennis. So we have, you know, yeah. people yeah. who just picked up a bat for the first time yeah. to yeah. National League. So obviously I know who you are and a lot of our players do. But for those that don't, can you just give it a little intro? Sorry, what was that, sorry? Sorry, I think it glitched, but I just wondered if you could do a little intro just for those that are yeah, sure. for our beginners. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so I'm I'm basically I'm a Paralympic gold medalist from Rio 2016. Um, I also play in, in the leagues in England. I play in the, in Division One in the British League, and um, I was 50 in, in in the UK rankings as well. I've got a condition called arthro. Uh, Arthrogryphosis, so you can see how it affects my hands. So it affects the grip massively of my of the table tennis bat. That's my playing hand, my right hand, and I I actually strap the bat to my hand now. So I've got a, a elastic band, like oh, wow. uh, yeah. So um, I have that strapped to my hand, and um, yeah, I've been playing since I was seven years old. So I've, fought, I've fallen in love with the sport um, ever since I was seven, and and yeah, I, I absolutely love it. I love it. Yeah, that comes across from a lot of the interviews and what we've seen on the TV, and it's just amazing. So, you know, uh, I've lost a lot of the players this, but what would you say your achievement highlight is? I'm assuming the gold, I would have thought. But yes, a um, yeah, I'd say so. I think gold in, um, in, in uh, when was it, Rio? It was, was really good. Yeah. Um, but also, and it was special because obviously, you know, it's, it's hard, it's, it was almost impossible um, in Beijing 2008. If someone would have said I was going to win a, a gold medal in a, in a Paralympic Games, I'd have I don't know if I'd have believed them, you know. So <laughs> it was just an amazing feeling and the pride of being able to achieve something you've worked so hard for is brilliant. And um, I also won the World Championships in China, and uh, yeah. that was probably a special. Uh, that was probably my most difficult match. I, I won in the I think it was fifteen thirteen in the in the last set. So. That was also a great achievement. Yeah, so, yeah, it's been a great career so far, but the best is yet to come in Tokyo. Oh, of course, lots <laughs> to come, indeed. Uh, I've just seen Dave Weatherall, he's just joined, you know. Uh, yeah, David, uh, he, loves it, he loves it, doesn't he? He'll be, his comments will be coming in thick and fast. Oh, yeah, he, uh, he always comes up with some uh, interesting questions. <laughs> That's for he's... sure, That's the word. And he's put, I'm on 4% battery, but I've come to drop some abuse. No, no you should be nice to Will. Come on. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> come on. He's a good guy. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, talking about the Paralympics then, you know, just even doing an Olympics and things yeah. like that, like, the atmosphere must be amazing. Like the village, What? how would you explain it, you know? Oh, um, well, when I was playing my first game in Beijing 2008, everyone was like, this is going to be like nothing you've ever experienced before. And I, I kind of like, I kind of like thought, okay, bring it on. It's going to be fine. But when I got there, it hit me. I was like, wow, it actually is like nothing I've ever done before. And I've been so lucky. I played in Beijing, Beijing in China, you know, the home of table tennis. Then I played 
in London 2012. I mean, mm-hmm. couldn't be a better atmosphere. I played in the final. Um, yes. uh, I remember. I remember the final of London 2012. I remember the XL being sent. Uh, sorry, yeah, the XL centre being sold out uh, for tickets, and also there was mm-hmm. uh, like four or five thousand people watching on the on the uh, TV outside. And for para table tennis, I, I don't. It's never ever been that big before. So that was kind of like probably yeah. one of the most special moments in my career. Uh, even though I lost the final, it was just the atmosphere was just incredible. And then, um, yeah, so, and then, you know, Rio was totally different in a different way. I mean, it was kind of like um, disappointing in some ways in the in the village. I don't think it was as good as London or Beijing, but, um, okay. you know, it was, special, you know, it was special for me for winning the medal. And, oh, you know, I'm hoping, I think, um, I think J- uh, Ch- Japan will take it to another level, hopefully, and, and really, like, um, kick it on. Yeah. Definitely. So, do you feel like, obviously, how do you deal with the highs and lows of the sport? Because obviously, I've seen a few interviews where you, you know, you were really disappointed. But do you think that helped you towards getting the gold in Rio? Do you think it really did help? Yeah, I think so. Definitely. It's just like um, everything in life. Um, it's you know, it's you, it's. I, I don't see it as win- when you win, it's fine to be, and when you're playing well, when you're winning, it's it's all easy to be to be good and positive. It you see someone's character when they're when their backs are up against the ropes. You know, that's when you really see what someone's made of it. In general life, you know, I've had my backs uh, back up against the ropes quite a few times, Definitely. so I'm used to it. So uh, a loss in a table tennis match isn't really a big deal, you know, compared to yeah. that sort of stuff. So I mean, it was just made. It just put fire in my belly to to go out there and to um, and to prove to prove to people how strong, how mentally tough I am. But I mean that, um, you know, I guess it's. I guess that it, I've done that more just in my in my sort of like life, like overcoming the cancer and stuff like that, and being able to walk. Yeah. I oh. I think that's more. I think that's more impressive than the actual table tennis side of it. But I still I'm really proud of my table tennis career. Yeah, definitely. And you have had to come overcome so much, you know, so it's fantastic. You know, you know, it's great that we can watch it and follow you and support you. And well, I, feel, I feel like I've got a lot of support from you guys and I feel like I get a lot of support from like the British public as well now, because obviously yeah. after doing Strictly, I had a, a big following after that. So, yeah. I mean, I, I do get amazing support and I do really appreciate it because, uh, you know, I mean, I've never had it before. So, I mean, it, it does mean a lot to me and I'm, I'm I'm really here to um I'm really here to make history next year and to make everyone proud because I, I work really hard and I, I want to make the yeah. country proud. You know, when I'm competing for Great Britain, I'm I'm doing yeah. it for you guys, not just yeah. for me. So yeah. yeah, and we can see that. So what's it like putting that Great Britain shirt on and stuff like that? It must have been an, such an amazing feeling when you did it for the first time. Oh, I was I was so proud to be representing um, yeah. Great Britain for the first time. You know, it's like um. You know, it's just this feeling of just putting on the shirt, and I, I have a pride. I, you know, I just, I just get these goosebumps. You know, just thinking about mm-hmm. it and thinking about representing my country. And, you know, mm-hmm. there's no, there's nothing I could do really. That you know, there's no money. There's no. It's not about the money. It's not about anything else. It's just about playing for Great Britain, and that is my main focus. And trying to do well for Great Britain, and it's something that money can't buy. You know. Yeah, I can imagine. Memories to treasure, isn't it? It's just amazing. Absolutely, um, absolutely. Just, I'm so proud. I'm so I'm so grateful um, that I've got the opportunity to play table tennis. I mean, I feel really lucky. So I just wanted to continue as long as possible and yeah, and, and keep it going. Yeah, someone's just said here, how to stay so motivated. Um, um, yeah, well, it's a, for me, it's a strange one because, um, you know, like motivation is 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 interesting because for me for me it's more about now it's more about proving and people say that you shouldn't do this but it's about proving people wrong that motivates me you know um um people people have said i I think thing the, the wrong thing to say to me or the right thing to say to me if you're a coach is you can't do this you can't go out and win you can't beat this guy I mean, I remember a story about Dave, Dave Weatherall. Dave will probably be watching this. We had a big argument. I love Dave. He's such a nice guy. He is a top guy and he's a great player. And he's super talented as well. And I think he's going to go on and win a, a Paralympic medal. I, I'll put my hat on it. But um, uh, I will say this, though. He motivated me before one mate, before the Rio 2016, because I remember I was sat in the canteen with him. And I remember he said, there's one... 
there's one player that stands out for the rest in class seven, like one player who's like the best player in the world. And then there's like a group after them and he goes, ah, oh, Maxim Nikolenko of Ukraine. And then when he, when he said that, <laughs> when he said that, I was like, I flicked my, there's this, there was this, um, you know, the switch that went off, you know, and I just thought, well, um, I'm going to prove to everyone that I'm the best in the world, you know, and, and at the end of the day, if, if I'm not, I'm not, but I just, I've just got this uh, competitive side. So I want to prove people wrong all the time. And I kind of like, um, I have, I, I just feel like I have this point to prove, especially being a disabled player, especially being a Paralympian. Mm. I, I believe I have to train harder than uh, Paul and Liam um, and all the other able-bodied players, mm. because I have a point to prove that, that we deserve funding. You know, I've, we've, I mean, I've had to put up with a lot of criticism in my career. People saying yeah. that the Paralympics doesn't deserve the funding that we get, um, which is absolutely laughable, to be fair, because we work our butts off. But um, I think I think uh, I think it's going to be interesting. We'll, we'll just see. I, I just hope I can go out there in Tokyo and to leave my legacy the way I want to leave it. And it might be my last my last dance, but I hope it's a good one. I'm sure it will be. I'm sure it yeah. will. Um, so, obviously, with uh, lockdown, have you had to sort of adapt your training quite a bit, or you know, obviously, to take yeah. time? Yeah, it's been really hard. I, I mean, I've 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 bought a watt bike, so I've got a bike here, which is absolutely oh, yeah. fantastic. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic because it's got me, you know, trying to, um, you know, get a bit fitter. Because obviously, I it was hard to maintain my weight and stuff, and um, in mm. and like to because I. I had this ACL um, reconstruction in January, end of January, February. Yes. And um, it's a massive operation. So I had that and then I couldn't move for like uh, about a week. And then like, obviously it's been very, very slow progress. It's four months, four and a half months post-surgery now. So, I mean, I'm starting to get my fitness back and starting to feel like I can play a bit. So I'm, I've just been doing rehab in the garden and, and trying to keep fit. But obviously I've not hit a ball for, it will be getting onto nearly a year now because of my injury. So, um, yeah, so I'm just going to, I am just can't wait to hit a ball and just work. I, I, could, yeah, I could probably play now from one position, you know, I could probably practice. So I think when the National Centre opens, it opens in August, the 1st. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Yeah, so John was just asking, you know, about your injury and stuff like that. So you just answered us. That's uh, great. Yeah. So, so just for... Oh, we had a question there um, come through from Dario from Italy. So you've got fans all over the world. By the looks of it. Go on, Dario. <laughs> he put, um, what is the first thing you do in the morning? And he says what he does is taking a coffee. So <laughs> taking, I do the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I've been, I, do you know what? Do you know what I've, I've noticed? Them, especially due to, I'm a, I'm a creature of habit. I guess it, I guess you could see it as like, um, being in an army in some ways like this is how you can relate it because um i i was sort of like i've been in the national training center for nearly 10 years now and we're we're so regimented so we just go there at a certain time we start playing uh you you do everything together and then you go and you sort of like you don't see normal life or anything you're just sort of like you're in this training center the whole time and since I've been in lockdown, um, I found it quite hard because it's like I don't have people telling me what to do all the time, yeah. and I don't have I don't have people like, you know, like almost like literally forcing me to do stuff and saying you need to do this, you need to do yeah. this, and then, and I found that quite hard. So I think mornings are I've found are the most important time of the day yeah. for me because I have to nail the mornings. I have to really have a great morning because otherwise I can write off the day. So I usually go. I go in there and in the in the lounge now, and I get a coffee. And I've got a new book, um, which is like a, uh, it's like a, a kind of like a thoughtful thoughtful book, really. And I write three things. I write three things down that I really want to achieve for the day. And then I, and um, I write a little note about why I'm. I write three things down why I'm grateful, as well. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, it does work for me. It sounds silly, but it works for me, and it keeps me sort of positive. And I think it's, um, I, I would recommend doing something like that if you're struggling with um, motivation or, or just struggling day to day. Because I think it's normal, isn't it? That we all struggle. Yeah. When, yeah. yeah so, I think yeah. I'll try that, to be honest. Um, yeah, because yeah. it is hard to keep motivated in these times. Um, it, obviously, it we're getting a few comments about your Strictly uh, 
experience. So, um, someone to start. What was your favourite dance you did with Jeanette? Oh, my favourite dance was either the the last dance that we did, which was the the contemporary dance, or the the first dance, which was the quick step. I really enjoyed that. But um, to be fair, the whole Strictly experience was really fun. I, I loved every single minute. Dance would have been the, the dance that I got injured on. It was my favourite dance. It was uh, yeah. we were supposed to be doing the jive, and uh, we were flying in as yeah. Casper, flying in from the rooftops as Casper the friendly ghost. So it would have been a really yeah. good, uh, it would have been a really good dance. But yes, yeah, so I was gutted. It just got injured on the Friday, Friday night, yeah. the last, the last uh, rehearsal of the ne of the night. I was, and I, mm -hmm. I, I remember as soon as I landed on my knee, I the pain i've never felt anything like it i re and i've been through a lot of pain yeah I, was gonna I, say. I, don't, I don't remember i don't remember it anyway feeling anything like it and i i thought my leg was broken and i thought it was like snapped off like it, i literally when i landed i just thought my leg was like gone like full like gone fallen off and i didn't look at my leg for like ages because i was expecting to see it up in the up in the air you know like right angles yeah and, it must um, so painful uh, and then when I when I saw it, it was together. I was like, "Oh, maybe it's fine." So like, maybe it's fine. And then I got up and I tried to walk, and I tried to walk it off. And um, you know, when you tear your ACL and the ligaments inside, it was like the kneecap just kept popping out of my, you know, just kept like coming out. And then uh, I had a scan, and then I took. They found out that I tore my ACL and the meniscus and stuff. So yeah, it was one of those one of those injuries you don't want to get. But it was, it's all part of the story, isn't it? Now, so. Yeah, definitely. And you seem so driven and, you know, we're backing you all the way and we can't wait, you know. Yeah, that means a lot. That yeah. really does. It means a lot to me to have the support. I'm, yeah, I'm... and, you know, we did that video for you. That was good fun. And John, our coach, he, he was getting so excited about the idea. But we got yeah, I love, that. I love that video. And I love the... Um... I love the promotional stuff that you guys are doing. You're putting a lot oh. of uh, work into it. and oh, that's I really think it's, fun. I think it's really good. I think it's amazing what you're doing. Oh, thank you. Um, if there's it's... anything if there's anything that I can come down to and um, um, help out with or like a tournament or something, I can come and help out with or speak to some of the guys. I'd really like to do that. So, oh, so that, that would yeah. be amazing. We, yeah. I was going to finish on that note, to be honest, and invite you down. But, yeah, you've beat me to it. So thank you. Yeah. That'd be amazing. Our players would love it. Yeah, that'd be really cool. I'd, I'd enjoy it. I'd enjoy it. Maybe have a yeah. practice against some of the guys. Yeah, yeah. We, like really cool. uh, they'd love it. Um, yeah. They really would. Um, but, you know, from your um, the Strictly experience, do you, what did you take away from it? And do you think it'll help you, you know, reach your goals coming up? You know? Yeah, I think I think I took a lot away from it. I think performing under pressure, because it was obviously, it was, you know, 12 million people watching. I mean, it was, uh, yeah. it was a lot of pressure having to do those lifts and stuff and you're thinking oh god i don't want to drop her or something like that so that was good yeah. and, uh, i learned a lot about myself in terms of like uh, being able to train with like someone in such an intense environment for like such a long period of time yeah. i mean i was with jeanette for like from like nine o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock at night yeah. every day just us two mm -hmm. so you can imagine it it's it's quite hard you know what i mean when you're with someone that long uh, yeah. But I, I learned a lot about myself because um, you sort of learn how to speak to people and you learn how to help people and, and try yeah. and be a team player. And I, I enjoyed that part of it. Yeah, I can imagine. It came across that way, to be honest. So yeah. can, you, can you just do a 30-second answer for this one? Um, so how did you get involved with table tennis, just to go back to the start? And did you do any other sports? Yeah, I did. I played... Um, loads of sports when I was a kid so I played badminton tennis uh, football uh, all quite okay level and then I and then table tennis was probably my favorite sport but I got into it because my grandma bought me a table tennis table in Great Ormsbury oh, Hospital like a mini one and that's yeah. how I first started playing table tennis. Oh fantastic and um, who would you say because obviously you will have met so many sports stars at the Olymp Paralympics sorry and um, who would you say which sports icon would you say has influenced you the most? Or you're a fan of? Probably, probably Tyson Fury because of the story of the comeback and like what he's overcome in his mental health and also yeah. uh, losing, losing all the weight. And, and in, in general, in my whole life, probably Muhammad Ali because of yeah. also just what he's achieved. No, that's a fantastic answer. Sorry, I keep dropping my notes. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> no worries. Um, yeah, no worries. So, um, 
I'm going to mix it up a bit. So who would you say your favourite table tennis player is on the tour right now? Um, I think it's probably, it's a bit of a boring answer, but probably Team Mobile. Yeah, no. um, yeah oh, no. just because yeah just because yeah he's so good and still so good at his age I think it's amazing yeah. okay great answer and then um, just for, to give an insight to all your fans so what rubbers and bats do you use and who are your sponsors yeah my sponsors are uh, T-Sport shout out to T-Sport and Butterfly and um, I'm, I'm, I'm currently using uh, Dignix um, yeah so I'll show you my bat, actually. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Brand new um, brand new rubber, Dignix 09C. So we'll see how it plays. But I haven't actually um, I haven't actually used it yet. So we'll see. And I, I, I was using 10 G 05. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's all good. Yeah, brilliant. And yeah. Uh, what's your favourite shot in table tennis? Do you have a particular favourite one or not really? You just like um, Yeah, I'd say... Um, my 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 ser serves probably my favourite or forehand counter top spin. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, with our army players, you know we we've got a lot that um, have sort of just started, and do yeah. you have any top three tips for them? Um, yeah, I'd say to it's one of those sports that um, it can be quite frustrating when you first start. So keep with it, stick with it. Yeah. Um, Try and enjoy it. I know it's frustrating, but try and have fun when you're playing. That's the most important thing. Have fun. Mm -hmm. Experiment with different. And I think the final one is um, with with service and stuff. Experiment. Don't feel like you have to serve in a particular way. Try different yeah. ways. Try different angles that you can serve. And have fun with uh, experimenting with the serve. I think that's quite important. No, yeah, that's really useful because I, I think because I've only just got involved with the sport in 2014 and I've realised having different serves is quite important even at my level. Yeah, you know, it's but... something that um, other countries really promote quite a lot, but I don't think we did that much of them, uh, in England. But like, I think in like Germany or something, when they first start, literally when they first start, their coach goes away and says, come up with eight, ser eight different serves. Oh, like wow. just, yeah, so, so just create different shapes with your body. And like four, you know, different spins, and um, and I think that's how they have such a sometimes a, a wide variety, you know. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah. Going back to the strictly day, someone's just put, "Did you love the spray tan and the outfits?" Yeah, I did. I did. To be fair, I was uh, I was always getting tanned and the outfits, and uh, yeah, I started on single Venetian and I went to double Venetian by the end of it, so I was really <laughs> dark. But no, it was, it was good fun. Are you keeping it up all the spray tabs? <laughs> no, sadly not. Sadly not. As you can tell, I'm probably looking a bit pale now. But um, yeah, I'm, uh, all uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to get on the spray tan bed as, as well mm. after this, after lockdown. Yeah, true. Uh, well, we did have that sunny spell, didn't we? I got a bit burnt, but um, <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. No, yeah. yeah. I was going to ask who have you got coming? Um, this is this is like a uh, reverse interview. Who have you got coming up on the show uh, on this like again? I've seen Paul's done it, hasn't he? Liam, has Liam yes, done it? Yes, we've had, we've had Liam as well, and we've got Dave, and your good friend Dave Weatherill. We've oh, got, Dave's coming on. Oh, awesome. Yeah, we've got Kelly Sibley, we've got oh, Darius Knight. Oh, wow. He's uh, put me on the spot now. Uh, oh, and a few others. So, yeah, I think in total, probably be about 14 lives, I think we've wow. got. It's been amazing, the support. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, we'd like to, thank you. We just want to do our little bit to promote the sport, you see. Yeah, 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 um, you're smashing it, you're smashing it. Oh, thank you so much. That's um, all right. Um, so, obviously, you know, being part of the military and even, you know, we get the fantastic opportunity to do sport when we're not deployed anywhere. Obviously, we have to deal with so many different types of pressure. Yeah. Even with sport, there's pressure. So how do you deal with that high-level pressure in matches and any tips for our players? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, my tips are um, for for me. I mean, I'm always I'm always open to taking tips as well. If you guys have got any tips for me, you know. But um, my tips that I I've used is having a routine uh, helps my nerves. I mean, mm. having a routine uh, like I I usually take ten minutes where I just sit and do nothing and think about my okay. body and how and how my body is and like think and just like scan my body. And, um, you know, and then I usually listen to music and then I do a physical warm up, but it's always the same. 
And I think yeah. if I do that every time, then I feel quite confident when I'm going out to play. If I don't yeah. do that, then I don't really feel very confident. So, yeah. Okay, so that's like your so that's kind of your rituals. Do you have any superstitions? Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess that is my sort of superstition. Sort of like I, I have that that ritual before I play, and then mm. um, I usually a, a bit of a nasty one. I if I have a really like good match, I usually keep the shirt the next day that I'm wearing. I try and dry it out a bit and, and put loads of uh, deodorant on it and stuff. But I usually keep it. Just I don't know why it's a lucky shirt. So I sometimes do that. Well, if it works for you, why not? <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> if it works, don't change it. Exactly. Um, so do you have any mantras? Um, you know, it's great to see your enthusiasm. You know, it's great. You've got so much like, come on, pumping up and like, yeah, exactly. going for it. I love it. Yeah. I, I, I have so much enthusiasm because I, I do genuinely love the sport. And um, I I know, you know, it's, it, it's, not, it's taken a lot to you know, to get to the level that I'm at. So I, I'm proud of that as well. And I think that's why I get so pumped up because I really want to win. Like I'm desperate yeah. to win. I'm desperate. I'm, I'm so hungry to win. And, um, and I think that's why I get so pumped up because when you train that hard and when it means that much to you, you, you do show emotion, don't you? It's like anything, you know, <laughs> even if you're playing, to be fair, even if I'm playing um, the boys, you know, if we go to the Paralympics and we have a quiz, I want to win so bad. I'm the worst. Like I'll be, I'll be, I'll be trying to win everything. So, yeah, it's just what it's just the way I am. I think I'm just desperate to win like a competition. I, I, I guess it was the way I was brought up and of mm. having an older brother and stuff like that. So, are all your family like that really competitive as well, or are they not as much? Uh, my my stepdad was really competitive, and my mm. brother was severely competitive. So we used to have mm. table tennis matches and then like. He'd chuck, chuck the bat in my head through from in the garage, like literally, like, and I'd have to duck out the way out of, out of it. So, yeah, we we used to like, we used to have some serious like, yeah, fights after training and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's not good. Brotherly, brother, I can't speak. Brotherly, brotherly love. Brotherly. Get exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It was like that. Yeah. But. Um... I'm going to ask you a mixture of questions now. So yeah, what's sure. your favourite yeah. holiday destination? Um, my favourite holiday destination? Um, probably Cuba's been my best holiday that I've ever been on. I went with my mum when I was like 15. I loved it. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. Um, so obviously a lot of people have, you know, I've seen a lot of the table tennis stars they doing a few new tricks or talents. So do you like baking? Do you sing? Do you like to cook? Uh, um, no, I don't like any of those things, but, uh, no, I don't, I don't really have any, any other skills really, but, uh, I'm sure no, you I do. Have, I have to think about that. I have to think about that. Ukulele. My, my, my biggest passion. I do love, uh, I love football. I love watching football okay. and I love, uh, um, yeah. And I was kind of like, yeah, I'm really passionate about all sport, all, all British sport. So like Olympic sport, I love. Oh, John's just said you dance. So that's you yeah, got exactly. that one. Well, yeah, I could exactly. say that. I could say I dance. I don't know. A lot of people would say I can't dance as well. So. No, yeah. you did a you did a fast <laughs> job there. Yeah. Um, um, so this is an interesting question. So obviously, as you've done strictly, and obviously the Paralympics winning that gold, how do you feel like you're coping with the fame? It's obviously you're getting recognised, I guess, more now. Yeah, I mean it's calmed down now um, compared to what it was when I was. Like when I first came out of Strictly, because because I was living um, in the hotel and training with Jeanette in London, I didn't really know how big it was. And yes. then when I when I got when I got injured and I came out of the hotel and I went home to Brighton and we went shopping for the first time, we went to a shopping centre and everyone knew me for like, and I'd never been like that before. And everyone in the shopping centre is literally hunt, like we were walking down the street and like everyone was coming up to me going, "Oh, you're the guy Strictly." And I was like, what? It's so, so weird. But obviously now, because it's been a few months, quite a few months past, it's not like that anymore. Um, but yeah, it, it was weird at first, but I'm kind of, I'm kind of getting more, people aren't, people don't know me like they didn't know me before. It's kind of running out now. So it's quite mm. nice, quite nice just to be normal again and being able to go out to the shops and know, no one knows who you are and stuff like that. I, I get, I got quite uh, freaked out by it, to be honest. Oh, I'm not surprised because it must just be so 
it's such a weird feeling. People yeah, just, right. random people just coming up to you. You know, it was. I, I was. I got noticed after the Paralympic Games, but nothing on the same scale. It was like a hundred times more. It was really, That's really, really interesting, that isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, yeah it was so weird. you had this question um, for someone else, actually, but I think it'd be quite a good one for yourself. So, would you do a charity match, or would you? Absolutely. I want to get a charity match in now with the NHS. I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to challenge, and you can, you can post this on your um on your Instagram yeah. for charity. I'm happy to do it in February, March. No, sorry, after April. I want to challenge either Scarlett Andrew or um what's his name Dennis Neal, Scarlett Andrew or Dennis Neal to a match for the NHS. I'm happy to do any rules. Like we've got to play, and um, we'll hopefully raise a lot of money because I think I'll whoop both of their bums. So um, we're going to do it for the NHS, and uh, we're going to raise a lot of money. So Scarlett Andrew or Dennis Neal, please, let's do this. Let's raise some money for the NHS. Yeah, what a fantastic idea! And you know, of course, we'll share it. So don't worry. Um, I'll make sure I get yeah. this one out there, and we'll share the idea. Yeah, um, brilliant. Oh, thanks so much. No, not a problem. And, you know, going on about fundraising, you know, it's amazing what you're doing. You know, you've done all these face masks. I've got mine here. You'll see. Hey. <laughs> so, yeah, so uh, I can say I've got it. So um, that came recently. So that's amazing. So oh, I love it. just because people don't know about it, what was the aim there? What have you done? Yeah, it's brilliant. Um, well, I came came up with the idea just randomly just um i was thinking what can we do to sort of raise money for for charity and um yeah it's brilliant and uh and um we just thought you know what we could actually make a um make face masks because i had a contact from strictly uh yeah. vicky Thiel, who, who who can actually who's got the sort of access to factory and stuff like that to make them and then we thought well why not why don't we try and sell them and you know we sold five thousand face masks already and we've still got a lot of exciting face masks to come out. There's a lot of great um, celebrities that have got that are, that are bringing theirs out. So Johnny Vegas has done one, and um, there's going to be four more celebrities that are going to bring them out as well. So, and they're really cool, um, cool celebrities as well. So I I hope they'll sell really well. No, it's fantastic. So just going back to when you won the gold, obviously, you know I saw it when I did my funny video the other night. It's quite fun to do. Um, I noticed he was, you know, your, how did you get to know Johnny Vegas and how's he been a sport to? Yeah, um, I got to know Johnny uh, because he was watching, randomly, he was watching my final in, in Rio 2016 and he was in the crowd and That's then awesome. I got chatting, yeah, so it's amazing. And then I just got chatting to him after the match and stuff and he's kind of following my progress um, in my career um, and he was supposed to be coming to Tokyo. But hopefully he's going to be in Tokyo 2021 now. But um, yeah, so he's just been a really good support of the the whole Paralympic team, not just me, uh, the Paralympic sort of movement. So yeah, he's been brilliant. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, yeah. um, are there any other charities that you're involved with? Or uh, Yeah, I do quite a bit of um, charity work. And, uh, you know, I, I do, but I do sort of like, I just, go to places and help out when I can sort of thing. I've focused a lot of my attention on Great Ormond Street just because um, I was brought up there really all my life, you know, from when I was sort of born to when I was sort of like, you know, 15 when I left uh, Great Ormond Street. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I kind of have focused most of my attention on on, uh, on them. No, it makes um, complete sense and you've raised a fortunate amount, you know, just... Yeah, I keep looking every now and then, it just keeps rising. So yeah, we're going well. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so, do you have any fears or phobias? Um, I have my my main fears is just like um underachieving in like a big tour, like you know, in a big tournament, and like not doing myself justice and uh, letting myself down. That's a fear of mine. Uh, but I'm not at least. I don't really get scared of much I, I i'm more scared of like um yeah just those sort of things rather than like spiders or anything like that oh, okay. I, I don't like rats so if i was gonna 
if I was going to go in the jungle or anything like that, that would be one thing that I wouldn't be very good at if rats were around me. I, I'd do it, but I would be scared. But I don't know why, because they're probably not the worst things. Probably snakes or something would be yeah. worse. But yeah, rats probably, I don't know why, yeah. but they're just not, not for me. Oh, no, I'm not a fan of snakes. I had one under my kit in Kenya. And I was like, oh, mate, it's a small oh, one. I wasn't expecting Still to have scary, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, it's yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, oh, yeah. Um, there's another fab question that came in. Um, what advice would you give to your younger self if you could? Oh yeah, I'd, um, it's a good one. That I've got, I've, I've got, a, uh, I've got a picture here. One set, I'll show you. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. Oh no, it's been taken down. Is it? Oh, I had a. I think just, one set. I did have a picture here. Don't know where they put it. Oh no, it is. It's on. It's on the. It's on the. I put it on the. Um, on the wall. One set. I'll show it to you. So we we had to we do this sometimes and it's like a sporting thing. And this is what uh, can you see? Can you see that? And this is like to your younger self. Oh, okay. All the hard work is done out there. I can... can you see it? And that's yeah. I can that's... Yes, I can see it a little bit better now, yes. Yeah, so Sorry, we do... we do we do like um I do I do like write. We ha we had we sometimes write things to ourselves for like a few years time, you know, like so we can reopen it again. In, and I think that's quite a good way of doing it as well. So like for motivation and stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I I kind of like um, just say like to my younger self, just um, just um, keep working and and um, you're gonna you're gonna achieve your your dreams if you keep working as hard as you are. And that's probably what I've just got to say to myself now. Keep keep plugging away. I think I think the main thing to be successful is to do all the dirty things that no one else wants to do. You have to do them day in day out because otherwise um everyone's going to catch up with you. So you just have to do it you have to carry on, you know, no matter what. You have to keep doing those things. Otherwise um otherwise you won't achieve those things because the only reason why those people achieve greatness is because they do everything that no one else wants to do. You know, they do every, they do all the stuff that no one else wants to do. It's always easy to talk about it, but it's not easy to do it. You know, it's easy to talk about it, but it's definitely not easy to do it every single day. And I think that's why those people are quite successful because they can do the dirty things that no one really wants to do. No one really wants to train on a Sunday after and their legs are sore and, yeah. you know, and they don't want to get out there and train. But those, yeah. those are the sort of, you know, those are the people that will be successful, I think. No, it's a very good answer and, um, you know, that will help a lot of our players, you know, mm -hmm. um, to sort of keep motivated and work for their goals, you know, if yeah. they want to become army number one or whatever. Um, yeah. Someone right. just said about your charity work, great work, Will, and, you know, just oh, great in there and a lot of green about rats and mice, but not a fan of them. So, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, as a coach, you might have had to just come offline, but um, he's just said thank you for doing this call in with Army Table Tennis. Oh, nice. Thanks. Thanks he, for having me. Yeah, he said he agrees you're very welcome to visit us in August in the future. And he oh, brilliant. The best for the new season. So, yeah, thanks I think so it's to go. Brilliant. No, thanks. Thanks so much for having me as well. It's been great yeah, to speak yeah. to you. But, and um, I'll, be, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely see you in person, in real life soon. I'll yeah, come down to the, yeah. That'll be amazing. I still have a few questions unless you've got to Oh, go. yeah, no, no, I'm free, I'm free, yeah. Oh, fantastic. That was just yeah. for John because I think he's shot off. And I don't oh, OK. Know. Thanks yeah, yeah, thanks yeah, for the message because um, he's a busy man, I think. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, um, so I was just going to say, so, you know, um, you know, when you were at school and stuff like that, you know, what was your favourite subject and do you like to yeah. study? Um, yeah, I wasn't the best at, at, at school. I wasn't the best. I was. I, I kind of struggled a little bit academically. I wasn't, you know, it wasn't my strength. So I loved sport. Sport was a, a way for me to sort of like feel like I was achieving something. So yeah, I, I didn't really. I mean, drama, drama, and sport were probably my two best. PE were probably my two most enjoyable subjects, to be honest. Yeah, because I I've, I think I've read about that you've done a bit of acting stuff, haven't you? Acting school. Yeah, well, yeah. I went to the Brit School for performing okay. arts, so that was great. I went there for two years as well, and I was playing table tennis at the time as well. So, yeah, that was a really good experience. Yeah, oh, I bet it was. And um, have you been watching much on Netflix or films, or have you just been too busy training? Yeah, 
No, we have been watching in the evenings, been watching Netflix. I've been watching this Phil Eats as well. It's quite good. I recommend that. Uh, also, I'm watching Amazon uh, Prime TV sometimes, and I've been watching these Gordon Ramsay, uh, like old school, uh, old school like uh, videos that he did, like like shows that he did, like who like like Britain's best restaurant and stuff like that. So I'm enjoying them as well. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah. So uh, back to the sort of table tennis side. Um, what would you say your short term and long term goals are? Can you share them, or is it secret? Yeah, sure. No, no, sure. Yeah, my short term goal is to is to try and win the gold medal in Tokyo in in style, and um, and to prove to everyone, especially the likes of um, you know, especially the likes of some coaches in England that I deserve I deserve to be to be seen as one of the best players in the country and I want to and I really want to um, shove it in their faces when I win that's my short term goal and then my long term goal is just um, to give back to table tennis and and I want to open an academy and um, try and um, get people with disabilities into table tennis because that's my passion and I also want to help out um, people from um, poorer backgrounds to get into table tennis and, and to and to excel in the sport because I think I think um, it's easier to be successful if you've got money behind you. Yeah, I haven't had that. I haven't had that, so I'd like um, I'd like the support to I'd like there to be support for those people. I've been lucky enough to get sponsors and stuff in my time, and some people aren't lucky enough to have that, especially coming through as youngsters. So I think um, it'd be good for them to have some backing. Yeah, that's that's just amazing. So, in the future, do you feel like you want to do coaching or just run the academy, manage it, be the manager, or? Yeah, I think um, I think I'd like to do some coaching, and uh, you know, I'd like to coach. Uh, I'd like to coach in the Paralympic Games. That'd be really cool. Maybe when I'm done, and um, but I'd like to coach at a lower level as well, just like beginners and and like and um, to develop players I'd quite enjoy that I think and I think it's quite um, I think it makes you feel good as well like you get a lot out of it so yeah that would be good yeah so what what's your ideal kind of coach and how do you think you learn the best when you're getting coached my ideal coach probably um, someone who is positive who gives a lot of positive feedback not always negative but I think I think they say you should say is it five positive things to one negative thing? So mm. I try someone who's very, very positive. Yeah. Um, and also someone who who uh, can tell me when I'm not doing things well, um, can tell me straight in a match. Because I think when you have someone in your corner, if they're too worried about like upsetting you, that can actually be a problem. You need to have someone who can be very honest with you and say like, this isn't working. It, you know, we need to change yeah. this or... You know, you need what you know. What you're doing, well, sort yourself out. You know, someone like that. You need you need to have a someone who you can be honest with. So those coaches, yeah, are really really important. No, that makes complete sense. So obviously, for a lot of our army players, they uh, probably haven't got um, a table tennis table. Or do yeah. you recommend shadow play, or what do you recommend? Yeah, yeah. I I really do. Um, I recommend shadow play, even if you do play um, every day on the table. Okay. Yeah, I think you should do shadow play probably every day, um, even if you're playing every day. Um, I think it's uh, because you, especially if you have a mirror. So if you if you can practice in front of a mirror, you can actually um, perfect your technique that way. Otherwise, you're just you don't really know what you look like when you're playing. So it's actually more beneficial sometimes to do shadow play than actually constantly playing on a table. Sometimes it's better to look at yourself and look at the shapes that you make when you're moving and look at the way your forehand looks and your backhand looks rather than just playing, you know? No, that's a really interesting point. So do you think it's worth maybe at our training camps, you know, um, to, you know, video people's play if we don't have a mirror nearby? Do you think that's... Oh, yeah, 100%. 100% because, um, you know, for example, I, I've been injured for so long and I was just doing shadow play um, in the garden and no one was filming me. And I thought I was looking absolutely amazing. And then someone filmed me and I was terrible. So like, you know, you, 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 think, you think you're doing this, you think you're doing the right thing, but, but you're not doing the right thing. So it's really helpful to look back at videos and, and try and 
perfect your technique or in the mirror, you know, just looking at the shape of your arm or looking at the shape of your, your feet when you're making a forehand topspin, mm. the tra weight transfer, stuff like this. Yeah. So Very important. Yeah, because we obviously, um, our top National League players are all over the spin and, you know, they're a bit more advanced than our beginners. But how would you, you know, advise people to get used to the sort of the spin? How would you recommend for them to develop their game? And uh, Yeah, into re reading spin. I'd yeah. say that um, there's, there's no, there's, there's no, there's no substitute and there's no easy way of, being good at table tennis apart from just playing a lot and, and training really hard like mm. there's no there's no quick fix you know you you have to train you have to put the hours in and it if you don't do that then you're probably not going to be you're not going to improve as much as you want to improve yeah. and even if you do do that you might not improve the way you want to improve but you've got a much better chance yeah so, definitely. yeah there's no secret you just have to train really really hard and focus focus as much as you can in the session and don't try not to get distracted try and focus on what you're doing no that's fantastic um do you, do you do swimming or anything like that you know other you know you know other activities to help you know improve fitness and stuff like that yeah i do um i don't do swimming but i I'm, i want to get back into swimming i probably will do before tokyo so like in the yes. next month when i go back to training but obviously we've, we have s and c um, four times a week. So in the national centre, we have S we have an S and C coach. So that's like we do sports specific S and C. So it's more like for table tennis. So movement like table okay. tennis, strength work for table tennis. So so yeah, we do we do a lot of stuff off the table. Yeah, no, it's just interesting because obviously when we can get back on the court or the table, shall I say? Um, yeah, yeah. Just different ideas for our players, you know. Because I think yeah. a lot of, um, obviously, being, I don't know, British Army, table tennis or whatever, or people go, oh, it's only a bit of ping pong. But then I've certainly learned, you know, it's such a tough and difficult game. And I oh, think yeah. when people see us in the sports hall after they've done a swim or whatever, they actually realise how technical it is. So oh, I think yeah. they, they eat their words a little bit. And, yeah, it's uh, one of those sports, isn't it? Unless yeah. you play it at a high level, you don't really know how difficult it is, you know? Yeah, definitely, and um, yeah. So um, obviously, I can see that you want to try and promote um, the sport further. Yeah. So, have you got any tricks up your sleeve on how you're going to achieve that? And we certainly um, will try and help if we can. Yeah, I, th I think just uh, <clears throat> I think just try and um, keep putting out there on social media. Keep trying to um, pr uh, push table tennis, you know, as much as I can. Um, you know, I think I think I think people like Table Tennis Daily, Dan and I is doing a fantastic job promoting the sport. Um, if we can get the Table Tennis Table match, if we can get uh, matches into uh, onto the BBC or onto like a, a TV television, I think that would be absolutely game changing because a lot of people remember players like Desmond Douglas and um, you know players like that. Uh, from like back in the day, but they only they re they only remember those players because they were on TV and they were amazing players. But they were on the grandstand and stuff like this, and um, uh, we don't have that anymore. Otherwise, people like Liam Pitchford and Paul Drinkle they would be household names in great in in England. They really would, but I don't think they get enough. Um, I don't think they get promoted enough, really. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I think you're right. Um, get more coverage. You know, even exactly. if it's on. ITV or even BBC, I think that would really. Oh, yeah. I mean, Liam's like, um, was he 15 in the world or something like yeah. that? It's just incredible. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, it's amazing. He's probably one of the best players we've ever had in the country. I mean, he's he's not far off being the best player we've ever had in the country. It's quite incredible. Yeah, and you know. Yeah, it's fantastic, and yeah. you, you know you're a credit to the sport as well. You know you've got Thanks. gold title, silver. You know the list goes on. So you've achieved a lot yourself, honestly, and it's you know amazing to have you tonight. You know, oh, definitely. Um, thanks. Yeah, well, um, just if you've got any more questions for Will, he's waiting. Don't be shy. Yeah. Don't be shy, guys. <laughs> I know. Um, someone's just put, um, "Hi, Will. You are such an inspiration." Wish you could have been on Strictly for longer, but the time you had was incredible, and it was so wonderful seeing how much you got from the experience, Harry. So you've got a lot of fans yeah, out there, and 
yeah, we could definitely see you enjoyed it and uh, it's nice to watch. Thank you, Harry. That was really nice to hear. Yeah, so, um, yeah. Do you have any last uh, few comments for your viewers? Yeah, just to say thank you. Thanks to you as well. Thanks for having the interview. I've really enjoyed it. And um, we'll, we'll, I'll come down and see you, see you soon. And um, we'll have another of these after Tokyo 2021. And uh, hopefully I'll have a gold medal around my neck. Oh, do you have the medals with you, by the way? You oh, yeah, I do. Actually. Oh, yeah, can we see them? Yeah, yeah, sure. That'd be amazing. Sure. One sec. One sec. That'd be amazing. Here it is. Mm. Can you see me? Yeah. Um, I can. Oh, that's amazing. Wow. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, been, um, it's been battered and bruised because a lot of people have uh, seen it. But yeah, it's always always makes me feel good sometimes. If I'm feeling a bit low, you just got to go into the into the drawer and get the gold medal out. <laughs> I was going to say, I was just going to ask that, is that what you kind of do if you're having a, one of those days? You do you go back to it and I bet you do. You yeah, know, I don't blame you yeah. at all. Oh, that's awesome. it still feels still feels surreal to be honest i think i think when i've retired and stuff i think these medals will probably mean a lot more to me but i, I think don't really right. think about them too much at the moment but yeah it's just amazing i'm, I'm really proud yeah and so you should it's an amazing achievement because when i obviously saw the interview back you got quite emotional but you're bound to be you know you've worked all yeah. your life for it um, exactly exactly yeah. and it, it means more than anything really to hold a gold medal in your hand like that i mean it means uh it's, it's not just about the medal it's what the medal represents you know that's what means a lot to me oh um it looks like john's still here <laughs> oh, <dear God>. oh, <laughs> good. he's still he's still hanging in he obviously uh trying to trick me i think what he says good man, john. <laughs> yeah nice. um irishman he's don't understand yeah, him yeah, half yeah. the time <laughs> Yes, um, he's. You've had so many nice messages. Someone says you have been a joy to watch and listen to. Wishing you all the best for Tokyo, and John's oh, super calling guys. Very enjoyable viewing. Great gold medal, top man. So, yeah, I think um, if we, can, I'll wait thirty seconds. See if there's any last minute questions. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, um, I know. If you're happy to bring that with you, you know, when yeah, you I'll visit, bring it, I'll bring. I'll bring this to the club when I come down. Where are you That'll guys based then? Where do you do um, training camps? Yeah, so we're based um, in Aldershot, which is the home of Army Sports. So we're oh, awesome. yeah, in Aldershot Garrison. Yeah, so hopefully that's close to yourself. Yeah, but, I'm going to um, come down. That would be amazing. Um, yeah, we'll have to arrange it for sure. Definitely. Love it. Awesome. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, All good? Be, yeah, so I'll just do a little last little uh thank you so uh guys we've had will bailey mbe with us tonight it's been amazing so thank you and like we say we can't wait to see you in person when you visit one of our events so thank you will for your time thanks tonight so it's, it's been thanks amazing everyone. insight yeah thank you so much thanks for having me and uh we're gonna have another one of these soon don't worry about that come see on you <laughs> thank you come on Cheers, guys. take care thank you take care bye 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 Hi everyone, thank you for joining tonight. It's amazing to have him on board, as I said from the start, and it's a great insight and we wish him all the best for Tokyo. And uh, we've got a few more lives coming up, hopefully you'll join us, and it'll all be shared on our social media. All the best and see you soon. Bye.